How's it going everyone? Welcome to this episode of Creative Update In Depth. This is not your usual creative update video where I just tell you the new things that were added. In this video, I will be explaining what the new devices do, how to use them, and I show you how to create innovative mechanics to make your map stand out with them. Before we start the video, please hit that like button. It really goes a long way. And also subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. If you wanna support me even further, you could use code immature in the item shop at checkout. Thank you. So the newest Fortnite update version 15.30 was awesome for creative creative. We got a lot of new devices and some cool settings. The first device they added was the phone booth. This device allows players to change their outfits and accessories during games using the same interface as the one found in Party Royale. The new phone booth device can be found in your inventory under devices. It's actually very simple to set up. There's really nothing you have to do. There's no options to use this device. So you do have to make sure you have started your game. It basically you just interact with it and change your outfits. And there you go, you have a new outfit, simple as that. There has been some reports where there are kind of a glitch where some people have been getting stuck inside. It's also not showing you the full animation right now of them exiting the phone booth, but I wanted to show you guys kind of a cool mechanic you guys could use with this to avoid getting stuck one, and two, you could kind of secretly add one of these devices and change your skins without people knowing. Let me show you how to do that. All right, first thing what you'll do, you can hide this somewhere in your map if you want, or if you don't want to hide it, you just want to get around that glitch where people can possibly get stuck, you can just use this as well. Um, however you hide this or where you want to get into it using a teleporter that's going to be up to you but first thing you're going to do we're going to grab a teleporter device place her down make teleporter group to none keep teleport group target to a turn the rift visible to no no play sound effects no concern for momentum no all right cut it and throw it inside the phone booth i get center in there all right perfect now what you're going to do is copy it and paste it outside then you're going to make this teleport group a and teleport group target to none and then what i'm going to do is i would like to turn on face player and teleport a direction to yes and you'll see this little streak here when they're teleported they're going to face it this way which is perfect if you're just trying to avoid the visual glitch where players are getting stuck all you have to do is just kind of place it on the outside of this phone booth and when you go in and you enter it change your outfit and see I'm kind of I'm I'm not stuck it teleported me away from the phone booth device so I can't get stuck or do anything like that so that's how you avoid that glitch but like I also said you can set this phone booth up in a remote location under the map maybe All right, so basically what we've done is you kind of have a secret button somewhere in your map and you've hidden your telephone booth below or wherever in your map somewhere. So say you're 1v1ing or you're in a box fight, you can secretly go in, change your skin real quick. And bam, it teleports you up top and you have your new skin. So it's kind of a cool secret way of using a telephone booth and people might not know that you change your skin and you can troll some people with it. And that's it for the phone booth device. The next new device they've added is the player checkpoint device. The new version of the player checkpoint device is placed as a prop rather than a trap and can be placed freely, rotated, copied, and pasted. All the existing functionality from the original player checkpoint device has been retained in the new device. Don't worry if you still have the old player checkpoint plate in your map, it's still gonna work. Another thing they've added though with the new player checkpoint pad is a new setting. You can now activate this device anywhere from a trigger. So a player doesn't actually have to touch it for it to enable a checkpoint, which is really cool. That opens up a lot of cool uh, mechanics. Also, uh, I thought of a really cool way to use this checkpoint pad. If you make this really big, it increases the hitbox size. And what's cool about that is it say you have like a wall. So as you see, we kind of have that checkpoint device behind the wall. It, it, it will actually read through the wall. So it's kind of undetected. It's very, very cool. And then as you see, we just, once we die, instead of spawning at our original spawn point, we spawn right where that checkpoint is. How cool is that? You can, uh, you know, use that to your advantage. You can make some really clean looking mechanics with that, I think. 
And the last device we're going to talk about is the end game device. This device allows creators to end the game or round immediately using channels, as well as dynamically set the winner and display custom callouts. So in your inventory on your devices, grab the end game device. Let's put this bad boy down, interact with it, click all options, and you're going to see here we have two options now. You can end round and you can end game. There were other options, a team inventory pad. You could use tracker devices. You could end the round already. But what is new and different is you can actually end the game now we never really had that option i mean you could end the game if you had one round and you ended the round now you can actually just end the game which is really really cool and a great add and the next option you see is um, winning team this is going to basically tell you if you end that round or the game what's going to happen if you have it set to winning team it's actually going to be looking in your game settings what you have set up so if you have gorba win conditions set to eliminations it's just going to look at who has the most eliminations and if you have it set to end the round it's going to give the team with most eliminations no matter who uh, interacted with this device it's going to give them the win now if you have it set up to end round and you set this to winning team it's going to be looking at your win conditions and more score or uh, most rounds one that's what it's going to go off on there the other options you have on winning team is activate team so whoever activates this device whatever team and this device does need a player signature so i mean it needs you know somebody sending a signal from a button a mutator zone maybe a tracker you have set up to get so many kills to win the game the player signature needs to be pressed for this device to work and then now what's cool is you can actually set it up by even teams um this is also brings me to my next point on um, the added new custom victory call out custom defeat call outs what's cool about this is if you looked in your user interface you would have seen we've already been able to do this right but we've only had one option you could no matter what when the game ends or the round ends this is all you would get but now you can customize it by teams so you can say team one good job blue and then you can go to team two good job red or whatever their names you can just do more customizable options for call out this is just really cool this makes helps with more immersion for your game mode the other th options you have obviously you can enable disable these what's cool is you can also filter by what team can activate this device um, another thing they've added that is totally new now though is we can actually filter ending a round or the game by uh, someone's class which i haven't really thought of any good uses just yet for this but i'm sure i will i'm sure someone will and there's this actually a really great add I love when they do stuff like this. Now, for this device to work, it, like I said before, it needs somebody's player signature and connect it with a channel. You would do that right here, and then uh, you can turn these off. So those are kind of the devices for the brand new end game device. What I want to do, you guys, I want to show you a really cool mechanic that I think every map will use and let me explain what it is i know they just released the new matchmaking device for everyone everyone can use this now i know a lot of people's problems especially new creators they have trouble filling up their lobbies right i mean this goes for maps that maybe are semi-popular this mechanic i'm going to show you is going to help fill your lobbies help with that issue right it's super simple to set up and basically what's going to happen is we're going to set up a system that looks and see how many players are at the start of the round and if it only sees one player it's going to automatically Automatically end the game and send players back to pregame lobby where they can rematch make again it's really easy to set up so just follow along with me all right so let's just imagine this is your pregame lobby you got your shout outs you got whatever you got your matchmaking portal in here um, let's grab your spawn pads so for your pregame lobbies with the new spawn pads you guys if you didn't know i put my priority to primary you probably don't have to do this but make sure you have use island start on and enable during phase create only i turn visible all right, so this this will be your pre-game spawns. Um, now let's go to your where when your game starts, people are going to spawn into. Go into this and set to game countdown on. Set to primary. Use island start. You're going to turn on no. And then what I want you to do is if you have a, find a free channel, we're just going to use one for this instance. And then however many players are in your game, 16, 8, 4. We're just going to use four for an example right now. Now the next thing we are going to add is a trigger. So find a trigger device. Times can trigger to two, transmit every two times, down visual effects, and visible in game to off, and then come all the way down here, trigger when received from one, and then when triggered, transmit on two. Next device, we're gonna find the objective timer device. Set start when round starts to yes, time two seconds. You could probably get away with one second, you might need to test that. Visible, no, no, disable, urgency mode to disable. Come all the way down here, turn your audio effects off. 
set to stop to two, set to disable to channel two, and set when complete to channel three. All right, now go in and grab the new end game device. Set it to end game. Set it winning team to activating team. Now as your custom call, it's gonna be no opponent please try match making again. Then come on down here to activate on channel four. And then because this device needs a player signature, we have to do one more thing. Grab your player reference device, set it down, interact with it. You can turn all this show hologram off. I'll just show it for fun, but turn that off. Visible in game, turn off. And then set no audio. Register player on one, activate on three, and when activated, transmit on four. All right, you guys, let's test it out. So the game starts, there's only one of me. It ends the game immediately because there's only one of me. No opponents, please try matchmaking again. And then you would return back to your pre-game lobby here, just like so. And then you can try to matchmake again. Pretty cool, huh? Well, basically how this works is if two people spawn in, it's gonna send two triggers off channel one, right? But channel one right here is gonna hit this trigger twice. When this is hit twice, it's gonna signal two. So it's gonna all happen off start, right? Well, this is getting played. This time objective is getting played right off start. And if channel two from that trigger is hit, it's gonna stop and it's also just gonna disable this device. So it's not gonna actually allow this firing. Pretty simple. Um, and hopefully you guys can find a cool ways to use this and hopefully it makes your map a little better real quick you guys I want to mention that I did make a matchmaking tutorial on everything on how to use this device I even made another tutorial on how to randomize all your matchmaking portals and make a cool user interface So go check those videos out if you want to learn more on um, the last thing I want to show you guys before we end the video is the new setting under settings They added called start with pickaxe. You can now start the game with no pickaxe This is perfect for like adventure maps or even even death run maps you can use this for. Um, you'll see that we don't have any pickaxe in our hand. You can zoom in and stuff like that. And of course our handy dandy brand new mechanic we created <laughs> is gonna end the game for us. <laughs> but basically that's kind of all the major stuff they added in this newest update. Hope you guys learned a lot from this video. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. I'm gonna keep these videos kind of just short and sweet and just wanna show you guys the most important things of the update. I don't wanna waste your guys' time. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. And again, if you wanna see more content like this then please subscribe i'll see you guys on the next video i'm immature gamer and i'm out hey you're still here thank you so much for watching the whole video i really appreciate it if you don't mind please press that like button it goes a long way i'm serious and while i'm sitting here begging for likes press that subscribe button it would really mean the world to me all right i'm really leaving this time hope you have a great day that's my name